Hello, hello, welcome to the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, I don't know why all of a sudden my background is blurred. Very strange. I touched nothing and it's changed, but never mind, we'll see. That's how it looks to me anyway, that this is recording with my background blurred. We'll see how it looks when I download this video. But anyway, what I wanna to talk to you about today is about a comment I got from my one of my clients at check-in this week and um she she made this comment and we've actually had a conversation today which was a super helpful conversation for us both to have but the comment she made is i'm feeling really resistant to how strict i have to be to lose weight and there are two things i want to explore with you here so it, the first one is the mindset of being strict and the second one is how you can actually reframe the term strict because it's inaccurate and and really focus on consistency of the basics rather than being strict okay so let's start with the mindset of this term strict and we're going to start with some facts so there are first fact is the laws of thermodynamics okay and that is that or an energy balance right so in order to lose body fat you need to consume less energy or calories than you expend right or you need to expend more calories than you consume it's the same thing it's just the other way around consuming less calories than you expend suggests that you create the calorie deficit via food which is what i would always do and expend more calories than you consume to me suggests that you try to um, outperform your diet by exercising more the thing is unless you are a professional athlete who is training twice a day seven days a week it's unlikely you're going to be able to move that much and expend that much energy that you create the calorie deficit via movement. So what we're relying on here is our calorie deficit is our neat, so our general movement, as well as our training, as well as all of the other things that make fat loss a lot easier. Okay, so that's the first that fact. The second fact is, you cannot eat and drink everything you want to in the quantities that you're used to and have the health, fitness and body that you want. So if you are currently on a fat loss journey or you want to lose body fat, if you continue eating and drinking in the way that you are, that has got you to where you are now, you will not lose body fat. So as I mentioned in last week's podcast, I came back last week from an 18 day holiday in France. Okay, now if I ate and drank and moved like I did on holiday, every day I would gain weight, fact. And I did gain a little bit of weight. Um, but if I did, if I continued eating and drinking the way I was on holiday and moving less, which is what I did, every day I would gain weight. Now, yes, you can enjoy your food and drink and not ban anything, but you do need to learn moderation. That's a fact, okay? Because you cannot have all of the cake and all of the alcohol and all of the booze and all of that stuff and still have the body that you want. And if there are people that are jumping into your mind and you're thinking but that person seems to eat and drink what they want and they never put on weight, the laws of energy balance and thermodynamics stay the same. They stay the same. And it is likely that that person that you're thinking of they might it might appear to you every time you see them that they eat like a horse maybe you go out for dinner with them every couple of months but actually they don't eat a huge amount during the day and actually maybe they walk a lot and they expend a lot of energy so whatever way you're thinking about this calorie deficit is required along with all of the other basics but 
you need to understand that you cannot continue in the way that you currently are if you've been gaining weight, if you're on a fat loss journey, eating and drinking whatever you want and still be healthy, fit and lose body fat. That's just a fact. Okay, so let's think about this word strict and what that is doing to your mindset and then therefore your behaviours. Okay, so having this belief that you have to be really strict in order to lose weight is a limiting belief. And that will in turn impact your choices, actions and behaviours. So if you believe you have to be strict and you have to restrict yourself from all of the things that you love, you will resist against that because you've already expressed it as a negative feeling, a negative belief. So eventually you will resist against that. And that can be like the binge restrict cycle, the all or nothing cycle, you know, hitting the big red button. You, if, if you allow that limiting belief to grow inside you that the only way you can lose weight is to be really strict, then eventually you will push against that because you're seeing it as restriction. A better way to reflame, 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 reframe this. Um, and actually I have a couple of reframes that you can use here. Um, so number one, it's a privilege to have a body that works and be able to get to do the things that we do. So there are so many people in the world that would kill to have a body that works, that they can, you know, that that isn't ill, that isn't diseased, that that carries them around and, and lets them do all the things that they enjoy. You get one life, you get one body. So rather than thinking, oh, I have to be so strict, and we're not going to use the word strict, but I have to be, I have to eat my six portions of fruit and veg a day. I have to go for a walk today to get my steps in. I have to work out three times this week. Rather than think like that, change it to I get to. I get to go for a walk today. I get to fuel my body with this delicious veg and lean protein and meals. I get to work out in a gym because my body moves that way, because I can afford to go to a gym, because I can afford to buy this delicious food where some people are using food banks at the moment. So swap the I have to and even I need to, to I get to. Second reframe, the habits that you need for weight loss are the same as the habits that you need for a healthy life. Plus we add in a calorie deficit for fat loss. So if you want to live and enjoy a long life and be independent for as much as possible, these are the things that you need to do forever. Okay. That's why this is a lifestyle change. That's why the work that I do with people is around building healthy habits into their lifestyle, not putting them on a diet with a meal plan. Because if you see this as a diet or a meal plan or a three month thing or a temporary thing, the minute it stops, you'll go back to your old habits, your old ways of eating, maybe lack of movement, and you will put all that weight back on again. OK, so just like I said, you can't eat and drink in the way that you have done and be healthy, fit and have the body that you want to have. That doesn't work. But if you learn to make changes to your lifestyle, then you will be able to. You will be able to live that life whilst enjoying the things you want in moderation. So, as I've said, in order to never diet again, these changes are for good. Like, I will work, walk, you know, eight to 12,000 steps for as long as I am able to walk. I will mainly eat a high protein, high fruit and veg diet for as long as I live. 
I will train in the gym until I can't train no more. (laughs) Okay, they're for good. So rather than resisting against them or thinking of them as something that you have to do, find a way of enjoying them. Some of them are really boring. And I said this to my client today. Some of these things are boring, but find enjoyment. Like it's cheesy, but fall in love with the process. You know, walking for me was never as enjoyable until we got Henry. And now I love it. Going to the gym was not enjoyable for me until I learned to lift weights. I love cooking. Sometimes I don't want to cook. On a Friday night, I hate cooking. So I whack on some cheesy music and I dance while I'm doing it. And I also make Friday mo- Friday evenings dinner super easy so that it doesn't take much effort. Okay, so find a way of enjoying these boring basics. So that's changing your mindset a little bit on this word strict. And then The second thing I wanted to talk about was how it's not actually about being strict. It's about being consistent. So if you change that word strict to consistent, it becomes a lot clearer and easier to see how you can do this and also where you possibly haven't been doing it. So I've talked about this many times, but I am always looking for consistency from my clients of 85 to 95% of the time. So that's 85 to 95% of the time, I want them ticking the boxes of the basics because that is what gets you results. And if you are not getting your results, if you're not getting the results you want, I want you to ask yourself and answer really honestly, how many days out of the last 30 have you consistently ticked these boxes? So these are the boxes you need to tick in order to lose body fat. So eaten in a calorie deficit, and it doesn't matter the method you use, whether you're intermittent fasting, whether you're juicing, whether you're doing keto, whether you're calorie counting, Weight Watchers, Slimming World, how many days out of 30 have you eaten in a calorie deficit stuck to your target? How many days out of 30 have you got seven to 10 K steps per day? How many days out of 30 have you eaten at least five portions of fruit and veg? How many days out of 30 have you eaten at least 100 grams of protein? How many days out of 30 have you done some sort of training? Ideally lifting weights, but it could be something else at least three times per week. How many days out of 30 have you got at least seven hours sleep? So to be consistent, you need to have ticked these boxes, there or thereabouts, 26 days out of 30. So you you basically could have, it's actually a little bit, it's just under 27 and just over 26, but we're going to say 26. So not doing it perfectly, but mostly doing it. What do I mean by that? So maybe one day was 6,800 steps. Maybe one day was a pub lunch, but you picked the highest protein meal that you had and you also made sure you got your five fruit and veg in that day. Maybe one day you went out for dinner in the evening, but you enjoyed two courses rather than three courses plus wine. So you maybe know that you went over your calories that that day but you know you also made a really conscious choice not to go a thousand calories over and you went you know 700 calories over that's what i mean by consistency so ticking those boxes 26 27 days out of 30 and if you think back and you honestly can't answer yes to that question then that is why you're not getting results because you're not being consistent okay so remove that mindset of strictness and 
consistently hit those basics. They're boring. They're boring basics. Learn to fall in love with them. Learn to make them exciting and try your best to make them as easy for yourself as possible. Okay. So if what I've talked about resonates with you and you would love to come and get some help from me on how you can do this. I would love to help you. Come and have a look at my website, themumblesmethod.com. You'll see that you can work with me in two ways. Um, I offer one-to-one coaching and also group coaching. All of the details are on my website. And if you are listening to this on or before the 4th of September, I am running a five-day free reset from the 4th of September that can help you to build in these habits, these boring basics, make them a bit more fun and get use some accountability and some support for five days completely free so you'll find the link to that in the show notes so i would love uh, to see you sharing this podcast if you have any questions please reach out to me on social media thank you so much for listening and don't forget it's not about being strict it is about being consistent love you bye